Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Church of the Palms. And uh, it's still Pride Month, so we're glad about that. What in the world is Pastor Paul doing on sabbatical? He's at home. <laughs> Apparently, by the socks, he's adventure man. So I don't exactly know what that means, but uh, anyway, he is still out on sabbatical, be back on the 14th of August. So we do want to continue to lift he and all of the family up in prayer. Speaking of sabbatical, on page five of your order of worship today, you have a little corner that's called sabbatical reminders. So please make sure that you're familiar with, uh, with what that, with what that uh, has to say. Today is the first Sunday after Pentecost. It is Trinity Sunday. And in our United Church of Christ faith tradition, we hold the belief in the triune God, Creator, Christ, who is the head of the church, and the Holy Spirit. And we also celebrate our ever-evolving theology and the understanding that God is still speaking. Many of us had a great opportunity to know Len and Corky Weiss. They were longtime members of the Church of the Palms and served in many capacities with the church. They shared love, they shared laughter with us. And they were very committed to making sure that the ministries of the Church of the Palms would go long after their passing. And so today I would like to share with you that the Lynn and Corky Weiss estate has made a donation to just a little over $138,000. So our Board of Finance has made recommendations regarding the allocation of those funds, and we are grateful for their generous gift. If you would like to add names to the printed prayer list within the order of worship, you can email manager at thepalms.org. That's also printed on the order of worship. Make sure you get the .org. If you do .com, who knows where that thing goes? I don't know. Hopefully somebody will pray for you at that point, but manager at thepalms.org. Or you can always call the church office and let us know of your prayer request. I mentioned to you last week that Joyce Jackson, one of our longtime members, had passed away. Her memorial service is this coming Saturday, June 18th at 9.30 a.m. And the graveside service will be held at Sunland Memorial Park here in Sun City. If you need the address, I can give that to you after the service. Next Sunday is Juneteenth, and Deacon Joan Crawford will be our guest preacher for the morning. It will be an enlightening time of worship as she brings the message, I need you, you need me. It'll be a great time of worship. Then on Wednesday, June 22nd, uh, that's at 3.30 in King Hall, we have a Church of the Palms new member information session. Say that three times fast. It is hosted by our evangelism and growth team. So if you're considering making the Church of the Palms your church home, or you just have questions about the varieties of ministry and learning opportunities that are available, this is the time for you. We have that information session, and then we feed you it's a great time as we share together. Make sure you sign up at the welcome table in the narthex. Then Sunday, June 29th, Reverend David Klingensmith will bring the message. It will be open and affirming Sunday across our denomination, and he's going to bring a message called, You Can't, you can't Have O Without A. Amen. Is, that, is that close enough? The 26th. 26th. Sorry about that, 26th. I just need June to be over with, apparently. So, <laughs> Then immediately following the worship service, we have a special called Congregational Meeting. You uh, were told about that a little bit last Sunday. And then there's an entire agenda in the palm leaf that was sent out to you. There are palm leaves available on the green tables out in the narthex. So that and all of the other opportunities of learning and worship are printed in our order of worship today. And now as we come to our time of welcome, 
I'm Pastor Jim Alexander, one of the pastors here at the Church of the Palms. Our senior pastor, as I mentioned to you, is uh, on sabbatical. If you're joining us for the first time, we are glad you're here to worship and fellowship with us. We will have fellowship immediately following this service, and I hear, and this is not, I'm not joking around this Sunday. I told you there was hamburgers a couple of Sundays ago, and there weren't. This is for real. <laughs> Root beer floats, right? So make sure you come back to King Hall and have some fellowship and refreshment with us. We are an open and affirming, social justice advocating congregation, one that welcomes all people into the full life and ministry of the church. Our mission is to demonstrate God's unconditional love, justice, and extravagant welcome to you, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. I'd like to extend a special welcome to Chris Scrivens, the grandson of Lynette Stenberg. Now, while that's a wonderful thing to be known for, <laughs> she paid me to say that. Chris is a marvelous musician, very active in a variety of musical organizations here in the Valley, and we look forward to hearing you play as you begin our service this morning. So welcome. We're grateful that you have chosen to worship with us today, either in person or by uh, your online device, anywhere that the space that, that God has created a sacred space for you. We join together in music and the spoken word. May you know God's presence through God's people here in this place today. So let us be open to wisdom as Chris and Jennifer lead us.
Good morning, my wonderful friends in the Church of the Palms. Please join me in our call to worship. Wisdom calls and understanding speaks. Creation declares your glory, and humanity marvels at your care. Merciful God, we rejoice at your works. Peace, endurance, character, hope, wisdom are all gifts. share a variety of quotes from across the vast spectrum of wisdom and thought. Today, as we focus on who and what wisdom is, we hear from Rumi, 13th century poet, Islamic scholar, maternity theologian, and Sufi mystic. He said, yesterday I was clever so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. Nadia Bowles Weber, ordained Lutheran pastor and theologian offers, remember Proverbs 8, Sophia, the wisdom of God is described at the creation of the world as rejoicing in the inhabited world and delighting in the human race. I want the day to come when Christians are described not as judgmental, 
but as those who live like the wisdom of God, rejoice in the world and delight in humanity. Joan Chittister, American Benedictine nun, theologian, author, and speaker said, if there is only one God, then why would we be surprised that there is a common wisdom coming through every stream? And how can we ever again possibly dismiss any of these traditions as possibly not being of God? I believe that the wisdom is where you go before theology, canons, creedal statements, denominations, because holy wisdom enables respect. The mystics of all traditions did not deal in creeds, in denominations, and canons. The mystics dealt with enlightened insight and wisdom. Good morning. You can join with me on any of the verses you know, but there are going to be a couple that you don't know. Great, <laughs> great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. And <laughs> Oh, good. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. me this is thy pleasure that 
The scripture reading today comes from Proverbs 8, verses 1 through 4 and 22 through 31. Does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crosswords she takes her stand. Beside the gates, in front of town, at the entrance of portals, she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is that to my cry to all that live. And the Lord created me at the beginning of his work, at the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was his daily delight, playing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. Thank you, Vicki, for your courage and for that song. And I only wish that I could play the trumpet or could have played the trumpet like that. And Jennifer, thank you for your support. Way a long time ago, when I was in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, I don't remember ever hearing a lesson on wisdom. I remember something about making good choices and being wise. I remember hearing something about wise men around Christmas time. But I never heard about Lady Wisdom, whom the ancient Israelites wrote about, a female figure created by God before the foundations of the earth, God's special delight. Some faith scholars have put forth that Lady Wisdom is simply a personification or referred to in a metaphorical term. Other faith scholars offer that Lady Wisdom and the Holy Spirit are one and the same divine force. We could certainly ponder these ideas for longer than we have time this morning. Years later, I felt like wisdom was something that was very difficult to access, a trait that I would have to work very hard to attain if wisdom was possible to acquire. I mean, can we be real here? Some people go their entire lives without exhibiting very much wisdom. (laughs) Or maybe my wisdometer is broken. What is wisdom? Who? is wisdom. Will you pray with me? God of all wisdom and knowledge, open our hearts and be in our thoughts as we look to you for guidance. May we become rooted and grounded in your ways because of our time together today. Amen. Lady Wisdom doesn't show up in church too often. Proverbs tells us that Lady Wisdom doesn't spend much time hanging out in the holy places. If you go looking for her, she won't be found in the temples or the schools of higher learning or the seminaries or even in the hallowed halls of governance. Where can she be? 
out in the crowded places, out where the action is. Maybe today she's on the golf course or at the lake. Or maybe she's standing at the entrance of the Cubs-Yankees game. Well, perhaps she better stand by at the Diamondbacks-Phillies game, which starts in a few minutes if it hasn't already. Scripture tells us that wisdom is standing beside the way, at the crossroads, beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals. Well, we don't have city gates anymore, but we do have town squares and sports arenas and outdoor malls. Can't you just imagine a tall, proud figure, Lady Wisdom, standing at the center of Westgate Entertainment District just up the freeway from here on a really busy Friday evening, just watching, watching the shoppers, the moviegoers, the football game attendees, hurrying to the shops and the restaurants. She's watching the constant stream of people, the endless parade of humanity, our busy human existences. What if she has the ability to, to, to stand on the information highway we call the internet, at the intersection of Facebook and Twitter, at the corner of FanDuel and Caesar Sportbook. What does she see? What does she say? Lady Wisdom is a watcher of humanity and a lover of people. She delights in the human race. She just likes us. She seems to think that we humans are funny and curious and apparently not so bright, or in any case, lacking in her special brand of wisdom. And that's why she stands in the midst of those busy places in our world, day and night, crying out continually to all people whether they have ears to hear it or not. Gain insight. Acquire intelligence. Seek knowledge and understanding. Hear my instruction. From time to time, you'll hear different versions and paraphrases of Scripture within our worship services. Like the Message Bible. In it, Eugene Peterson has created a fresh, modern language translation using the vernacular of our day. So Proverbs 8 sounds really different than what Judy just read for us. Lady Wisdom cries out things like, Listen, you idiots, learn some good sense. And, you blockheads, shape up. Those aren't my words, those are Eugene Peterson's words. Now I know that the United Church of Christ tends to like soft verbs and a softer approach. But if you're like me, sometimes I need some stronger tone to snap me out of my spiritual days. Strong encouragement to be about the work that God has called me to do. Sometimes, well, a lot of times, I need a little shock to get my attention focused, in this case, on exactly what Lady Wisdom is trying to do. Lady Wisdom is crying, learn from me and gain wisdom. Most of us would say, all righty then, count me in, sign me up. I'm ready to have more wisdom in my life. Only, what is wisdom? Where is it to be found? Well, the good news is wisdom is still among us. What are we learning from that instruction? How does it inform our steps? How can we move from that abstract 
philosophical notion. Hey, God, can you give us some more clarity, some concrete instructions so we know exactly what to do before we find ourselves in a jam? It seems to me that most people do want to live a wisdom-filled life. We do want to be wise in our decisions and our actions. It beats the alternatives. But in a time, a place and a culture with a thousand competing ideologies and truth claims... We don't even know really what truth and wisdom look like. The Bible doesn't point to just one easy answer or one solution. And while I have not read every sacred text that has been written, it seems to me that there are no easy answers. Why? Because there's not just one thing the Bible has to say about wisdom, but many things. The Bible speaks with many voices about wisdom in the Old and the New Testaments. Indeed, you and I will need a lifetime of listening to the voices of wisdom and the voice of the Spirit to work more wisdom into our lives. So as we think about how we become people of wisdom, perhaps we could start with a common thread within the scripture passage today. Wisdom. Life. Whoever finds me finds life, says wisdom. Psalm 1 likewise compares the wise person to a tree planted by streams of water, whose leaves do not wither and who bears much fruit in its proper season, the tree of life. And James 3 offers, Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom, and calls us to lead a life that is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits. The ways of wisdom lead to real, vital, life-giving, spirit-filled ways of being. The tree of life, the tree of wisdom, mentioned in our readings this morning, reflects the intimate connection between wisdom and life. For a tree to become strong, good soil and some water encourage deep roots, healthy growth, good fruits, and abundant harvests of righteousness. It is wisdom that nurtures this deep growth. Wisdom, the nourishing sap that runs through the innermost parts of all living things, God's trees and his people alike. When we make wisdom-rooted decisions, then our actions are life-giving to all who are around us. In wisdom, we support and nourish the spirit-filled ways of being and becoming in the world. But we got to pay attention to ourselves first and then the community and ultimately the world. Wisdom has to begin with our own growth to seek out the Spirit's movement in our lives, acting on the Spirit's prompting and making decisions that are going to nourish and bring health to our souls. That's got to be a priority. In our weekly Paul at the Palms that you received this past week, Kay Klinkenborg offered some wisdom on how to do just that. So whether you're needing to step into grace or access wisdom, stop, step back, listen. 
absorb. Be silent. Silence is a spiritual practice. Too often we want to we want to respond or speak before really thinking things through. And wisdom says, gain insight and be willing to yield. Silence allows us time to gain perspective and employ wisdom. If you aren't finding spiritual nourishment and health for yourself, how are you going to be able to reach out to others? God calls us to be welcoming, supportive, and life-giving to others on our journey and to do so with love and wisdom. As we interact with human becomings God places on our path, may we do so in ways that are gentle and born of wisdom. Motivations that are pure and peaceable, devoid of manipulative and self-centered tactics. Lady Wisdom encourages us to be willing to yield to the needs of others over our own, acting in mercy. In so doing, we help others flourish and thrive. We nourish the divine in them. When we make decisions in community, Wisdom encourages us to ask one another, do my decisions and my actions help your spirit thrive? The book of James says that wisdom is marked by its gentleness and its peace, never by violence or aggression. Wisdom spreads life throughout our community, community subtly rooting out hostility and planting seeds of justice. It is our work to cultivate those seeds into full bloom as long as we have life and breath here on earth. What the world needs now is wisdom applied through love, sweet love. In ever-widening circles, wisdom touches our neighborhoods and our city streets, daring to see God's face in neighbor and stranger and nourishing them, cherishing them, helping them to thrive. Wisdom invites us to delight with her creation and to care for the life that God has made. Wisdom is so intimately connected within the earth that her wise people cannot help but nourish and care for the environment. We could even apply James' principle of gentleness and peace to our interaction with all creation, including the earth, the plants, the animals, every living thing. So wisdom, as it turns out, is the practice of life. And practice makes progress. (laughs) Progress. You wanted to go from where you are today to perfect? Oh, goodness. But progress. The writers of Proverbs depicted wisdom in such a vivid and lively way, not as an abstract philosophical concept or an idea, but what is real, live, flesh and blood. Why? I believe it is so that we might see her as a template for our lives in this messy human life, this journey, this adventure of eating and praying, working, sleeping, gathering at this table, being the church. Wisdom calls us not out of our lives, but deeper into them. 
deeper into our very souls, our relationships, our communities, and neighborhoods, deeper into the mysteries of creation itself. Lady Wisdom is far more than simply another gift of God. She is nothing less than the co-creator with God of all that is. These are eternal gifts that every generation of people must prize and practice as we become all that God has created us to be. Amen. As we come to our prayer time together today, I'll remind you that as you think of those who are on your heart, those who have mentioned, you know, I could really use your prayers. As long as you have permission from that person, then you can certainly submit those names that we might add those to our prayer list. I would give you one now, Victoria McWilliams a member of ours. Uh, she had a procedure over the weekend and she is still very much in need of our prayers and lifting her up for uh, healing and health and wholeness. So many others you know of this morning. Let us go to God and lift them up. Eternal God, thank you for your goodness and blessings. We are grateful for this sacred space and those who are gathered with us here today. Thank you for the life-giving nourishment we receive as we worship you in wisdom and truth. We acknowledge that we live in a time of considerable confusion, conflict, injustice, a sea of mixed messages which overwhelms us. So today we ask for your wisdom, Holy One. We seek clarity of thought. We seek to represent you at the city gates, in the town squares, ministering love and wisdom. We are often fearful, as was Solomon. We live in a time of peril, war, of world unrest. Different and competing interests strive for our attention and loyalty. Help us, O oh God, to pray for wise and discerning spirits. Help us to know good from evil. 
give us wisdom to assess the clamoring voices and concerns with which we are daily bombarded. Give us a wisdom so that we might learn to be accepting of all the diverse people you have created. Give us wisdom to be peacemakers and mediators of understanding where there is conflict. Give us wisdom not to violate any of your creatures by discriminating against them or othering them. Give us wisdom to discern what is of ultimate value for our souls and for the souls of others. And now, God, hear us in our silent prayers. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we worship through generous giving. Hear this story about a wise woman and her stone. The wise woman was traveling in the mountains, found a precious stone in the stream. The next day, she met another traveler who was hungry. The hungry traveler saw the precious stone and asked the woman to give it to him. She did so without hesitation. The traveler left, rejoicing in his good fortune. He knew the stone was worth enough to give him security for a lifetime. But a few days later, he came back to return the stone to the wise woman. I've been thinking, he said, I know how valuable the stone is, but I give it back in the hope that you can give something more precious. Give me what you have within you that enables you to give me something more precious. Give me what you have within you that made it able to give me the stone. As we seek to be wise ones, sharing all we have, food to eat, love and safe spaces to share, may we also give of our time, talent, and treasure so that God's work and wisdom can spread near and far. Let us pray. You are the great provider, the giver of all gifts. Your love, the only true currency. Thank you for placing so many gifts into our hands. Our desire is to freely offer them back to you for use in your service. We do this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of our service, but if you'd like to stay longer, you'll have to do it in King Hall with a root beer float. (laughs) But before that even, uh, if you desire to partake of communion, uh, Reverend David Klingensmith will be here to serve you. If you cannot make your way to the front, he'll be glad to find that hand in the air and come and serve you. Now let us stand together 
as we receive this blessing and sing our song. As we call out, come quickly, Lord Jesus, so may we also cry out, come quickly, Lady Wisdom. Go out with joy. Go out with clear minds and gentle speech and loving actions. This is the high calling of God on your lives. Amen? Amen. Peace.